Welcome to MLC TV News Hour, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Conference State of Nigeria. I am Jane Gia Balagbubu, and first the headlines. FAB disposes 802 billion naira June revenue to federal governments, states, local governments. Kogi State House of Assembly on Wednesday confirmed Kingsley Fowl as commissioner nominee. Muqtada al Sada supporters stormed parliament building in Baghdad. Euro Women 2022, England confront Germany in the finals. And now the news in detail. The Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC, has disbursed 802.407 billion naira to the three tiers of government for the month of June 2022. The amount disbursed was over 121 billion naira, more than over 680 billion naira shared in May. The balance in the excess crude account ECA also grew to over $35.77 million in May. These details were contained in a communique issued at the end of the Federation Account Allocation Committee FAC meeting for July 2022 held in Abuja. The over 802 billion naira total distributable revenue comprised distributable statutory revenue of 608. 580 billion naira and distributable value added tax revenue of over 193 billion naira in June 2022. The total deductions for cost of collection was 44.606 billion and deductions for transfers, savings, refunds, and 13% derivation to Anambra State was a total sum of 373.200 billion naira. The communique confirmed that from the total distributable revenue of over 802 billion naira, the federal government received over 321 billion naira, the state government received over 245 billion naira, while the local government councils received over 182 billion naira. The sum of over 52 billion naira was shared to the relevant state at 13% derivation revenue. Gross statutory revenue of over 1 billion naira was received for the month of June 2022. This was higher than the sum of over 589 billion naira received in the previous month of 422.113 billion from the over 608 billion naira distributable statutory revenue. The federal government received over 292 billion naira, the state government received over 148 billion naira, and the local government councils received over 114 billion naira. The sum of over 52 billion naira was shared to the relevant state as 13% derivation revenue. In the month of June, the gross revenue available from the value added tax was over 208 billion naira. This was lower than the over 213 billion naira available in the month of May 2022 by over 5 billion naira. From the over 193 billion distributable value added tax revenue, the federal government received 29.074 billion naira, the state government received over 96 billion naira, and the local government councils received over 67 billion naira. According to the communique, the month of June 2022, companies income tax, CIT and petroleum profit tax recorded tremendous increases while import duty, oil and gas royalties increased marginally. Excise duties decreased significantly while value added tax decreased. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bello has appealed for improved funding to enable the Federal Capital Territory Administration complete its numerous priority projects. Bello, who made the appeal during the second day of an oversight tour of FCT projects by the Senate Committee on the FCT, also expressed appreciation for the support the committee has given the FCTA over time. He said that the FCTA was placing a lot of emphasis on the completion of as many projects as possible. The minister said, basically, as they round up this administration, their efforts are to complete as many projects as possible based on prioritization according to the funds available. The minister further stated that the past two days of the oversight project tour concentrated only on a few projects within the city. 
such as roads and water projects, while pointing out that the FCT administration was also executing a number of projects in the satellite towns covering roads, water and power. Belo stated that most of the road projects inspected were significant in ensuring seamless traffic flow and further boosting economic activities within the city. Commenting on the Greater Abuja Water Supply Project, which entails construction of water supply network, Belo described it as a legacy project and appealed for more funding in the budget to enable the FCTA get its counterpart funding for its execution. He explained that on completion, the project would ensure sufficient and uninterrupted supply of treated water to the whole city and its environs. Addressing newsmen at the end of the second day of the tour, Chairman Senate Committee on the FCT, Tori Lokbe or DBE, again scored the FCT high in the execution of high quality projects in the territory. The Senator, who also pledged the continued support of his committee to the completion of the project and provision of services in the FCT. Kogi State House of Assembly on Wednesday rescreened, cleared, and confirmed Kingsley Fowl as a commissioner nominees presented to the House by Governor Yahaya Bello. His rescreening was sequel to last week determined by the Speaker of the House, Prince Matthew Kolaole. He was initially screened as commissioner nominee on January. 30, 2022 before he resigned in April to contest for the House of Representatives Yagba Federal Constituency, losing with a margin of two votes to Fulusho Olafemi. The governor subsequently after the primary forwarded his name along two others to the House as Commissioner nominee, the Speaker Matthew Kolawole, who corrected the notion that Farmer's nomination was rejected by the House last week said he was only referred to today's legislative sitting. He equally asked the members to allow the nominee take a bow and go, having justified his position as a commissioner for information before his resignation. He was seconded by the House members. A team of executive arms comprising of the SSG for Lashade Arike, commissioners for finance and education, Asiru Idris and Wemi Jones, Kofi Algon, chairman, Issa Taufik and other appointees were at hand to give him solidarity. Meanwhile, the commissioner nominee Kingsley Fanwo, after the screening, said his renomination by the governor as commissioner reaffirmed the confidence. Said the development will enable him strengthen the agencies to perform their activities. He also promised that the digital radio transmitter purchased by the state will soon be installed at the state's broadcasting station. The Kogi State Chapter of the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, APWEN, has inaugurated engineer Christiana Ojoi Omatola as third chairman of the body in the state. Engineer Christiana was inaugurated alongside other new executives of the body for the 2022-2023 and 2023-2024 tenure. The inauguration ceremony was conducted at the Hall of the National Inland Waterways Authority, Niwa, Lokoja, with a charge on the third chairman and her new executives to continue to impact the lives of the female gender positively. Our reporter who covered the event has more. To uphold and defend, to uphold and defend memorandum and articles of association of Apwen. The memorandum and articles of the association of Apwen. To have the Apwen constitution as my guiding rule. To have the Apwen constitution as my guiding rule. I shall not use my position to lord over any. I shall not. I will never use my position to lord over any. So help me God. So help me God. I hereby declare the third upwind chapter chairman inaugurated. That was the mood of special guests, members of Kogi Upwind, and other well wishers the moment engineer Christiana Ojoy or Matola was announced as the third chairman of the association in Kogi State. Engineer Christiana, in her acceptance speech, expressed gratitude to the body for finding her worthy to serve as the new chairman of Kogi Apwen, saying 
she is aware of the enormous responsibility associated with the position. She pointed out that she will focus on bringing about new initiatives that will help improve the productivity of women engineers and the female gender in the state and also called for the support of members of the body towards ensuring the growth of the association in the confluent state. I want to take it from where my immediate past president has left it and uh, we are talking about this girl child whom we are trying to convince or to educate, to read engineering. We also want to take a look at their parents because they are not on their own. Their parents also have a say in what these children will finally be at the end of the day. So this administration will also look at the parents, try to talk to them to see the need for female engineers to erupt in this our generation. The state outgoing chairman of the association, engineer Joan Oguche, appreciated God for strengthening her to finish well, while calling on the new executive to take the association in the state to greater heights. I feel happy. At the same time, I feel fulfilled. The person I'm, my successor, is somebody that I'm so optimistic of her success. I know she will do well. So my advice for them is to be determined, remain focused and be prayerful because with God all things are possible. My advice for her is uh, to continue to embark on this advocacy campaign. Let uh, parents know that their daughters can make it in life. Let them know that engineering is not for boys alone, that girls too can study sciences and become the best engineer of our time. So they should not stop. Let them go to schools, let these uh, messages go to parents, go to teachers and encourage even at the neighborhood, even in the churches. Let them know that their guests too can be the best in life. Some awardees at the event are National President, Association of Motor Dealers of Nigeria, Engineer Prince Adedoi Ajibola, Medical Director, Federal Medical Center, Lokoja Kogi State, Dr. Olatunde Alabi, and architect Daniel Tony. They appreciated Kogi Apwen for recognizing their contributions to the development of the society with a promise to do more in the days ahead. It is because they have decided to give their time to it to be able to be exceptional. Like I told you earlier, engineers are creative thinkers. Engineers are team players. Engineers are builders of society. So in those three things, you should understand that whatever you're doing as an engineer, you're an exceptional person because you need to give back to the society at every point in time. So what I want to advise them is, being an engineer is a great thing. Because the truth of the matter is, you don't only get satisfaction from the, the, the kind of monetary returns you get, but you'll be much more joyful to see that what you used to build, people are using that same thing that you built. It brings more joy than even what you benefit from it. Engineering is everywhere, and I want to encourage the girl child to take to the profession. It's easy. Usually by jam standard, like physics, chemistry, mathematics, English language. If you have further mathematics, it's a, it's a plus. We are all out to encourage women to participate fully in the professional jobs. And uh, they are up to the duty. Um, they are mothers. So you will be surprised that at times they handle issue even more professionally, in a calm and subtle manner, in most cases. Traditional rulers at the event, Eje of Ofu, Alhaji Aku Obaje, and the Eje of Ibaji, Chief John Egwemi, who were also recipients of Apwen Award of Excellence, emphasized the need for parents to accord equal attention to both male and female children, describing them as gifts from the Creator. What men can do, women can do better. I think we can see a lot of that in their time. We are here to encourage them and to do more. We will preach, I use the word preach, to such fathers who are still conservative. If you say you don't give education to female child or children, how do you expect your son who is a PhD holder? 
to marry an educated lady. So it's a, a misconception. I think every child deserves right to be educated. Sometimes even women do better. And you can see it from the time of uh, Beijing in China. They are trying to excel and do better than men. So it's good to encourage all parents who are conservative to change their mindset. The new state vice chairman of the association, Engineer Padamasi Bilikisu, stressed that the new executive are resolute in seeing to the growth of the female gender in the state and charge them to continue to believe in themselves. We plan, I would not say promise per se, but with God, as I said earlier, we are going to see that the girl child see reasons why they will come into science subjects and also embrace engineering in particular. The program featured the administration of oath of office, the inauguration of the new executives of the association conducted by the new chairman, presentation of awards, prizes, cultural display, and a road walk, among others. Joshua Adenoy, reporting for MLC TV. Muslim faithful have been called to tolerate one another, including non-Muslims. The call was made by His Royal Highness, the Ohi of Okenwe, Ahmad Tijani Ozi, late Mohammed Anaje, on his return from Saudi Arabia, where he went to perform Hajj. We urge everyone in our community that we should look ourselves as in one person. Don't look anybody that this one is a different religion, either this one is a different religion. Being as a human being, we are all one. Because in the Quran, God himself, he said, La yu minu ahdukum hata yu ibla ahihi kama yu ibli nafsik. He said, your faith will never be complete unless you love your neighbor the way you love yourself. He did not say unless you love only Muslim. He did not exempt anybody. He said, your neighbor and your neighbor, which is everyone that is very close to you, they are your neighbor. So that is what we are going to tell everybody in my community. We should love each one another. He urged the Muslim faithful to follow and abide by the teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Ohi of Okenwe expressed his gratitude to Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello, who made sure the state in the Saudi Arabia without hitch with positive memories of his good deeds. We really thank God that uh, none of us left behind the whole entire Kogi as we go there everyone come back and the information we are still getting up to now from the airport down to various uh, individuals no anyone encounter any trouble we really thank god and uh, in reaching the pilgrimage what we did there the first thing is to make sure what make us go there we really put things in order and uh, which is uh, the worship of uh, Allah, of which we did. And secondly, we give uh, thanks to our Excellency, uh, Governor Yahya Adozabilu, because he really tried for us, because he made sure none of us face any trouble in reaching uh, Baka. And we offer prayer for our hometown. We started from where I came from, which is Okenwe. Okay, go to the entire Ibera and the whole Koki state and the nation, which is our country, Nigeria. Of which we believe, with that our prayer, very soon we will start to see positive changes in our communities. Oh, he joined over 200 pilgrims to Mecca to perform Hajj as part of the five pillars of Islam to strengthen his faith and pray to God for his immediate family and the entire state of Kogi. Oh, he was celebrated by hundreds of people when he returned to his hometown in Okenwe, Okene local government area of Kogi State. We go on a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
Businessmen and women at the popular Katangua market have called on the Lagos state government to reduce their daily levels and dues often collected by the local government officials in the market. The lamentation came following the recent increase in the transportation of their goods and products to market due to a hike in buying PMS by transporters. Our reporter has more. Katangwa Market is a very popular and strategic market located at Okeodo, close to the popular Ileipo Market along Iyanopaja area of Lagos State. The market is well known for its second-hand wares, but other items are sold there. It has thousands of people going in to buy and sell daily. It occupies over 10 hectares in Okeodo local government development area. But the market, which used to be populated with goods, products and people pouring in to buy, now experience low turnout. They attributed the cost to the high cost of importation. It is no surprise that the economic hardship has eaten deep and many families have been affected by the present reality, as also businessmen and women. One among traders in the market, Emeka Alex, lamented that the money the local government are collecting from them is affecting them and that it has increased inflation. Well, everybody you see in this place, in a year, all these tables you say in a year, if you calculate the money that pay, it's more than 100,000 naira. It's more than, because this little every day, they pay more than 500. So you calculate it in a year, it's more than a tax. But make sure coming to the market and know what to do about that because it's not helping the economy, it's not helping the the business people as a whole. It's affecting the industry drastically. Other sellers and buyers also share their views, saying the high cost of buying commodities is frustrating people's efforts to live a good and normal life. In fact, I've been walking around the market since morning, going thinking maybe someone is selling expensive or whatever, but things are really expensive, very, very expensive. They are selling 1,000. By the time you get to the market, you buy it one, two. So by the time you get there, a customer comes around. They will see that the they will think maybe you you are set, you are putting much uh, gain on your markets. Things that it has really affected the business seriously. So that every time you want to order, be to tell it. Koba wa gituz, awo kola toke, awo price ocha, awo kota na kole wale. So kota feki kuba shifu wani. The Yalocha of Katangwa, who spoke in Yoruba language, said due to the rise in the cost of importation of goods and wares, popularly called bills, there is reduction in patronage. On the issue of levels and dues, she said they are not receiving intervention as expected from the government. She called on the state government to come to their aid by improving the market facilities. So um, many people are running away from Okrika market in Katankwa now. That is what we are on it in Kotaba, Lori and Sini. It was a general calling on the federal government to improve the economy of the country, to reduce inflation because the continued increase in prices of goods and services has affected people. Consequently, it has reduced the purchasing power of individuals, resulting to hardship and liquidations and closure of many businesses. Ayomide Dada, reporting for MLC TV, Lagos. The Oyo State Government has rinsed stated 129 public primary school teachers unlawfully sacked by the previous administration. The executive chairman of your state universal basic education board, Dr. Nureni Adiremi Adeniro, stated this while congratulating the teachers. He said the Executive Council of Oyo State has approved that a total of 129 officers wrongly dismissed by the Oyo State Government between 2011 and 2019 for reinstatements, subject to agreeing not to demand for arrears payment for the period they were away, which the state converted to leave of absence. Adeniro appreciated the Governor of Oyo State Engineer Sheyi Makinde for his kindness and selfless consideration in administrating the paysetter state. He noted that the recent reinstatement of the state's 129 school teachers who were fired by the previous administration is a symbolic achievement that cannot be neglected. Adeniro therefore called on teachers in the state to reciprocate Makinde's gestures through commitment to duties and redoubling their dedication to work. 
He also called on them to key into the Governor Shea Mackinday's led administration's goal to change the narrative in the education sector of the state. Now on foreign. Hundreds of protesters have breached a high security zone in Baghdad and broken into Iraq's parliament building. The supporters of cleric Muqtada al-Sada opposed the nomination of a rival candidate for prime minister. Sada's political alliance won the most seats in last October's general election, but it is not a power due to political deadlock following the votes. Police reportedly fired tear gas and water cannon at the protesters. No lawmakers were present at the time. The group penetrated Baghdad's closely guarded green zone, which is home to a number of the capital city's most important buildings, including embassies. A security source told the AFP news agency that the security forces initially appeared to have halted the intruders, but they then stormed the parliament. Iraq's current Prime Minister Mustafa al kadimi called on protesters to leave the building while the crowd sang, danced and lay on tables. The unrest follows nine months of stalemate during this dispute between the country's different political factions have prevented the creation of a new government. He and his supporters have opposed the candidacy of Mohammed al-Sudani for prime minister as they believe him to be too close to Iran. Wednesday's scenes served as a reminder of the multiple crises faced by Iraq despite its oil-rich status. Now on Sports News. Stand-up for Women's Societies, SWS, has congratulated Uluwa Tobi Amosong's newly had fourth fame in the world of athletics, where she made history by becoming Nigeria's first ever gold winner at the World Athletics Championships. Amosong, 25, a student of the University of Texas at El Paso, had an excellent performance at the World Tournament representing her fatherland nigeria after she set a record time in the semi-finals of the 100 meters hurdles event with 12.12 seconds this broke the 12.12 record of america's kendra harrison who finished behind amazon at second place president of stand up for women's society barista abosede de ijadele aditona said the society is so proud of the feats recorded by amazon at the oregon USA tournament, which had since attracted accolades and commendations across the globe. The World Athletics rewarded Amazon, who President Muhammad Buhari described as a Nigeria's golden girl, with a sum of 65 million naira for breaking the world record at World Athletics Championships. Ijadele Adetona said she wants to call on all Nigerian women to be steadfast, especially the young girls across the country to take a cue from the life of Toby. They should strive to be focused and be committed to whatever they're doing. Stand Up for Women Society is a networking forum created as an umbrella to promote women affairs and influence the minds, actions, and practices of the general public at various governmental levels to support and ensure fair share responsibilities to women. The society is also out to enhance and encourage women to have self-confidence, freedom of choice, freedom from violence and attack in achieving their goals. A top Cuban athlete has defected while she was on her way back from the World Championships in Eugene, USA. Olympic bronze medal, the Skostra Yame Perez, 31, abandoned the Cuban delegation while on a stopover in Miami. Her defection comes just days after that of the 19-year-old javelin thrower Yeselina Bella. Bella had also used a stopover in Miami to escape, but had done so en route to the World Championships. Another member of the Cuban delegation, physiotherapist Carlos Gonzalez, absconded on the same day as Yame Perez. Cuban Athletics Federation President Alberto Joan Turena said last month their defection serious in discipline. The departure of 
top athlete has made a marked effect on Cuba's position in the medal tables. At the World Championships in Eugene, it registered its worst performance ever, leaving without a single medal. The Euro 2022 final between England and Germany at Wembley will be a great football feast. According to Germany boss Martina Voss, Teklebong, Alexandra Pope scored twice as eight-time European champions Germany beat a spirited France side 2-1 in the second semi-final on Wednesday. They will now play England on Sunday in front of a crowd of up to 87,200 England who have never won the tournament, reached the final thanks to a 4-0 victory against a Swedish side ranked second in the world at Sheffield United Bramel Lane on Tuesday. However, was Teklebong felt there were still plenty of areas to attack the Lionesses, saying England have been incredible in this tournament every single game for dynamism, lots of goals and they are so incredibly confident. England then coached by Phil Neville lost 2-1 to one to Germany in front of 77,768 at Wembley in November 2019, with Clara Ball scoring a 90-minute winner. However, Voss Tecklenburg felt that that match would not be a good indicator of what was to come on Sunday. No woman or girl would be left behind. to Matthias IODG Peters for the entertainment news. On our entertainment news, Apple Music has announced Afrobeat singer-songwriter Majid as the latest featured artist in its Up Next Artist Development Program in Nigeria. The announcement was made on Wednesday, 27th July 2022. Speaking on the announcement, an excited Majid tells Apple Music that his music is an extension of his person. Born and raised in Nigeria where he has to contend with the daily realities of economic and social difficulties, Majid sounds is rooted in Afrobeats and speaks frankly about the realities of day to day life, intended to motivate, inspire and heal. A sensational writer, Majid Salent, has seen him get accolades from Till Savage, Shei Shei and Zuchu, who are some of the artists he has worked with. In 2021, Majid independently released his breakthrough single, Time, and he followed it up a year later with his debut EP, Bittersweet. It's a six-track exploration of a toxic relationship that relays universal themes of disconnection and misunderstandings, spearheaded by the dance floor-rooted lead single, Yawa No The End. As the newest openness act to be spotlighted in Nigeria, Majid will be featured across Apple's Music Nigeria's openness playlist. The curated openness playlist features a dynamic class of new and emerging artists, thoughtfully and picked by Apple Music editors from around the world. This announcement sees Majid joins Kaid, 90, Young John, T.I. Blaze, Brownie Pondis, Ajebo Oslas, Jido P, Wavy the Creator, and Swa WD as Apple Music growing stables of openness artists from Nigeria. And that is all on entertainment news today. My name is Matthias Ayo DG Peter. Reporting for MLC TV News. And that is the size of our package for today. Join us tomorrow at the same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Malakai TV. Like and follow our Facebook page MLC TV, Instagram MLC TV 2021 and Twitter at MLC TV 1. For your events, coverage, information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. It is Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Jane Gia Balagbubu. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a peaceful and united society together. Good evening and thanks for watching.